since pastors only work one day a week, I didn't have time to uh, work this week. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, what's your perfect vacation? Go ahead, tell me. Give me a give me a location, a destination. First off, Hawaii. Hawaii. My perfect vacation is when they can still fight. Okay, well, I don't think that's ever going to happen, but I'll, I'll pray for you. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to Hawaii. Texas. We can we only go to one place at a Okay, we're going to drop Charlene via, via parachute out of the airplane over Texas as we go to Hawaii. Okay? So, so we're going to we're going to go to Hawaii. Where are we going to stay? The beach. We're going to stay at a beach at a beach house or a beach resort? The, the beach, just the beach. So, okay, Jody's gonna swing out a hammock on the beach. And I, I guess, and, and I, I get her. She's gonna be drinking mai tais, and you know, and she's gonna invest in suntan lotion before she goes, because I know how that plays out. <laughs> so, okay, we're we're in. We're going to Hawaii. We have a a beach resort set up for us and I say a resort instead of a house because um, at the beach resort you get all of the things that you want included in, in the whole package so you can eat all you want, you can drink all you want, you can have, you can go to the entertainment, the meals, and the luau hours at night, at night, whatever you want to do or you can just be by yourself and float on the lazy river, whatever. I've never been to Hawaii but I'm, I'm guessing and um, Huh? Oh, we have a hammock for Jody. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, so the weather is what seventy to seventy-two degrees. There's no rain. The sun's out. It's beautiful, and when the, when the sun goes down at night, the stars are out in full. And it's just completely relaxing. And you can, everybody do this with me. <sighs> Picture it in your mind. You're on vacation. In the UP. No, you're not in the UP. We're in Hawaii. <laughs> we're in Hawaii. We're, we're, we're relaxing. We're relaxing. Everybody's waiting on us hand and foot. The kids aren't fighting. I was going to say, you missed a... Mom, she touched me! <laughs> the kids aren't fighting. Matter of fact, maybe we left the kids at home. We're <laughs> Pastor Dan! <laughs> okay, Pastor Dan has a daycare center at home. Wait a minute, this isn't a good vacation for me. I said I only work one day a week. Come on, guys. Even one day. I don't think you can get down and back in a day. Do you just take the kids for a day? Oh, oh geez. <laughs> now this whole vacation thing has evolved into Pastor Dan's going to babysit all the kids. Oh. You only work one day a week. <laughs> Vicki walked into my office this morning and she, and we were talking about somebody that we know and their stress level was out of sight and they had to up their medical marijuana prescription to obscene levels and I'm saying you know what that's a de-stressor I need some of that and she says well maybe you need to cut down on some of that like, no I need more of that don't I who's got a script, who's got a script they want to share with me is what I watch the kids I can too y'all watch your own kids on marijuana I can watch your kids on marijuana come on <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to hear that comment. <laughs> so anyway, the perfect vacation. There's no worries. There's no back home. You don't have to think about going back home. The kids are absolutely just fine. You're relaxed. And the only, the only part about the perfect vacation for me is, especially going to Hawaii, what am I going to wear? <laughs> yeah, I know. This girl is like, no, I don't want to. Right. That's that's my point. That's my point. So, 
in the perfect vacation, everybody else would be blind. <laughs> so, so I can wear what I want to wear and be comfortable on the beach, right? <laughs> I don't know. We're, I mean, we're almost talking uh, uh, maybe my vision of heaven now, <laughs> where I just get to do whatever I want to do. Uh, but have you ever had one of those perfect vacations? Or are you? Oh, of course, Jody has. And, you know, I. I <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Oh, you know what? I'm going with them on vacation from now on because every vacation I've ever taken, we either broke down, didn't have a place to stay, ran out of money, somebody got sick. Um, so let's see. We have a broken down, a broken down. Huh? Yeah, well, yeah, the mask thing. The, the latest was the mask thing. But I mean, I'm, I'm thinking past vacations before pandemic happened. Um, if it could happen to us on vacation, it did. Absolutely insane. And, and the biggest panic: visiting a Walmart. I have to use the restroom. I take my gun off because I wear a paddle holster, and I set it on the handrail and do my business and put my coat back on and leave. And then we get up to the car, and what did I forget? In the bathroom, at a Walmart, complete panic. I'm like, oh my goodness, oh yeah, I can see the looks on your faces. So that, that kind of starts out my vacation is, a, is an extreme panic thing. But before that, what happens? I go coffee down in front of myself. So my favorite vacation shirt, my favorite vacation pants are now covered in coffee. Right? And so then we stop at McDonald's to get a breakfast sandwich. Everybody stops at McDonald's to get a breakfast sandwich before you go on a vacation. And you shouldn't do that because what happens when you stop at McDonald's for a breakfast sandwich? You drip grease. You, okay, you, you drip grease on you, yeah, but you have to go to the bathroom, right? Because McDonald's, I don't care who you are, it runs through you. And now you're stopping, you're like, okay, there's a rest area. We're, Google the rest area. So you're Googling the rest area, and it's beeping at you saying no signal because we're in San Lake County. And where's the first rest area? It's got next rest area is 172 yeah. miles away, but the governor closed it down. <laughs> okay, now what do we do? Give you that half styrofoam cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the outhouse with the styrofoam cup to wipe with. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh wow. So, so you, so you do know about our vacations and our outings. Things like that happen to us all the time. There is no such thing as a perfect vacation. And we thought we were we thought one time we were going to have the perfect vacation. We had just just got the truck fixed up. It was a uh, um, 1992 F350 quad cab. So it had the four doors, full eight foot bed, um, lifted, mud tires, diesel in perfect condition, ready to go on the trip, so we're not going to break down, and where are we headed to? We're headed to Traverse City, because we've never been to Traverse City before, we heard that it was absolutely amazing. Any of you all been to Traverse City on vacation? Yeah. Did y'all have a good time? Was it amazing? Yeah. Beautiful, yeah, it was great. No, not for us. We got to Traverse City, and we were completely lost, and we tried to go here, and tried to go there, and we couldn't get anywhere around, because there was a soccer, a soccer tournament in the city of Traverse City, and everything was closed down. There, everything was pulled up. What's that? That was from me. I was there for a soccer convention. <laughs> What's the chances? Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Bart. <laughs> she adds to our frustration. You're not one of those with that uh, prescription, are you? Because <laughs> I'm be knocking at your door, Martin. <laughs> oh, so it was it was a there was no place to eat because everything was everything was full up. There was no place to eat. There was no place to stay. The only good thing that we had going for us was the truck was running good. That's the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, the vacation that we're talking about, the 
this morning went a whole lot like our vacations that we've tried to take. Jody, you're not going to be able to relate to this story at all. <laughs> I mean, not, not one bit, except for maybe the husband griping at you maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, I get you. You got that, yeah. <laughs> That time I went on one family vacation, and it was awesome. <laughs> and in my head, the song, everything is awesome. <laughs> huh? Usually something is beautiful or something like that. <laughs> so, we're in chapter 2 of the book of Luke. And in chapter 2 of the book of Luke, it is the Christmas story. But we might as well just go ahead and call it the Christmas vacation. Because that's exactly what it is. It's two people, a guy and a gal, the gal very much so pregnant, making a 90, tri 90 mile trip journey to their ancestral hometown, so where their ancestors were born, because the some some government official said, hey, I need to count everybody in order to tax everybody, and you need to travel so that I can count everybody. So they started to prepare. Now, they didn't have to fix up their vehicle or anything like that, but they had to pick, well, they had to pick out a donkey to take <laughs> if they had more than one. Huh? At least the donkey didn't die. At least the donkey, yeah, maybe one of them did. I don't know. Well, it was, a, it was a pretty, maybe they took two. I, I, I really don't know. Some of this is just speculation, speculation, and we're just, we're just going to go with it. And uh, I always thought, you know, that, that when Mary and Joseph were, were going on their vacation, they're going, um, taking the 90-mile trip down to Bethlehem, uh, which is the city of David. Why the city of David? Because that's where David was born. That's David's hometown. And everybody said, well, Jerusalem's the city of David. Well, uh, yes and no, but this is where David was born, and that's where they're supposed to travel to. So they're going down to, because, of course, Joseph was of the line of David, right? Which gives him heir to the throne of David, and thus giving Jesus the throne of David so that he can rule everybody, and that was last week's. So that's just a little reminder for last week. So anyway, you got Joseph, and he's, he's out there, he's trying to pick out his best mule, and I'm, I'm thinking... You know, how are they going to, how is, how is, first off, how is Mary going to ride on a mule? And this blew, this absolutely blew my mind when, when I looked at, when I looked at this from fresh eyes and from a different point of view, you know what, they had a cart, since Joseph was a carpenter, they had a cart, he had to have made a cart to hook on to the mule so they didn't have to carry everything. Doesn't that make sense? I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to make this trek, and they're like, um, uh, who's the mountain guy? Uh, um, Grizzly Adams. That, I'm probably dating myself here. Y'all remember Grizzly Adams? Okay, and, and he had the mule, right? No, his buddy had it. His buddy had the mule. And, they, and he put everything on the mule, and the mule carried it all, but he had to walk. So I'm thinking, okay, so they both have to walk. Uh, no, she could have rode in the wheelbarrow-looking thing that they strapped to the mule and travel like that. That's a great idea. And my mind is blown. Wow. They had wheels back then. <laughs> All the more just to break down. Especially since the trip was so uneven. They had to go uphill. And they had to go downhill. I don't know if I would want to be in that wagon going uphill and downhill and over all of the rocks and the rough terrain. Okay, you're what nine nine months pregnant and you're riding in in a wagon with no suspension and you're going over rocks that are four to five inches big. And so what's happening? Boom, boom. I mean, the, the whole thing is going like this, and Mary's getting getting slammed around back there. I'm sure she's packing as much stuff as she can around her to, to cushion the, the blows a little bit, because there is no suspension on them buggies. You want me to turn the heat down a little bit, Kathy? 
So they're on their they're on their trip. The guy told them the, the gov government told him you have to take this trip. So he's on his they're on their they picked the mule out, they've got their they've got their stuff all loaded up. And what time of year is it? It's winter, isn't it? Oh, it's a perfect time of year to go on a vacation. Winter's a perfect time because where we go to Hawaii, where we can get away from all the cold and all the snow and all the BS around here. Uh uh. They're not going on an airplane. So, yeah, they're going south. But they're not going that far south. They don't even know about Hawaii yet. So they're traveling by foot, wagon type of thing in the winter. And it's an extremely rough terrain that they're going over. Let's, it's 30s during the day, freezing at night. And in the winters where they're traveling at, it rains a lot. So, okay, you remember the, what, they, what they normally wore? Sandals? Sandals and some kind of cloak type thing, dress, I don't know what you want to call that thing, whatever, whatever robe they put on, they would tie, you know, belt around their waist. And um, I, haven't, I haven't wore a dress since college, but <laughs> from what I remember of wearing a dress, when it's windy and cold outside, it's not very comfortable to wear a dress. The wind blows in places that wind should not blow and get things cold that should not be cold. And so they had to get their biggest full fur or wool clothing, cloaks, coats, whatever they had, and to put on. And Oh, Betty's downstairs, isn't she? <laughs> and uh, we just sent a picture uh, to Betty via, via Facebook um, of this huge coat. Some of you have seen it. This guy's wearing this huge coat. It's big and puffy. And Tiffany's like, you might need this for the Christmas Eve service so you stay warm. So they, they had layers and layers and, and, and pulled on these big old wool socks over top of their sandals. And then I, I, don't, I don't even know how that would work because the socks are going to wear out. And, and I don't know why they would pull them over top of their sandals instead of putting them underneath their sandals. But you know what? I just... I just go with what's recorded and <laughs> question it later. And so they they set out on this on this vacation trip. And I, I just have to know. Y'all women out there, if, would you start out on a trip like that and be nine months pregnant? Are you kidding? <laughs> I've never been pregnant, Kathy, I don't know. <laughs> we do have some crazy women in the crowd here. <laughs> no way. So Kathy's like, no way, you're you're stupid, preacher. We ain't gonna do that. But there's there's even question as to whether Mary even had to go. Because remember, they were, she was his betrothed, so they weren't officially married yet. They were only engaged. So why is she going? Because that's where she's supposed to be counted? No, I, I don't. Maybe I don't know. All these questions that are coming, and I, I'm questioning her sanity because. She's claiming that what uh, an angel came to her and she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit and all of that and she's never known a man and and now she's traveling 90 miles through um, in the winter time and I don't know that Hail Mary for the grace um, uh, I, 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 don't even, I don't even know the thing, but I don't know that it goes very well. Because the choices that she made were a little bit sketchy. Kind of like the choices that Charlene makes when we go on a trip. She will get everything that she wants to take on the trip, and she will pack it around her in the truck. So she can't move two inches. And she's packed in there, and I'm like, Char, can't you put some of that in the back? No, I gotta have it here. I need this and I need that. I, mean, I don't. I don't know about your choices here, honey. They don't make a lot of sense. So, I don't think Mary's choices made a lot of sense. But you know what? She was doing what God wanted her to do. And a lot of times, when we're doing what God wants us to do, it doesn't really look rational to other people, does it? So they're 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 both crazy right now. 
I, I, I don't think I would have, see, they get to this, they get to this area, um, uh, the, it's a heavily wooded area called um, the, um, I'm going to look at my notes so I get it right. Oh, the Jordan River Valley. All right. And we think, oh, they only have to put up a terrain. And that's the, that's the biggest problem is going uphill and downhill and, and the rocks and, you know, and, and all that. So that's their biggest problem. But no, because they've got to go through the Jordan River Valley, which is a heavily wooded area where they have to contend with wild boars, where they have to contend with bears, where they have to contend with lions. Can you imagine going on a vacation in the dead of winter and you're wearing this big old suit and you're freezing to death and it's raining and a lion comes out of the woods to try to eat your face off? That's our kind of vacation now, isn't it? And I'm like, Sharp, do you not have anything packed around you that can fight off this lion? She's like, no, I got some Cheetos and I, I... Okay. Give the lion the Cheetos. Maybe he'll eat them and leave us alone. Um, but they had all these constant dangers, and not only did they have the dangers of the animals and, and the terrain and the environment, but then they had crazy people that wanted to come and, um, and rob from them. They had bandits and pirates and robbers that just didn't want to do, um, they didn't want to do work. They just wanted to take from somebody else. Uh, they had all kinds of problems. And then when they got to where they were going, traveling 20 miles a day, roughly, they were going to stay with some family members and there's no room for them to stay with family members, which would be us, to the T. And then, okay, well, let's stay at a motel and there's no room at, for them at the motel. Well, and then they had, they had different stages of motels, you know, just like we do. We got the really expensive ones, and then we've got the cheap ones, and then we've got the, the ones that you don't want to stay at, but they'll work in a pinch. And then you've got the ones that charge by the hour. <laughs> so they tried the whole gauntlet. I, I, I've been at those hourly charge guys. And just don't take your coat off, just lay down on the blank, don't pull the sheets back, because the bug, you'll scare the bugs. As long as you don't stir the bugs up, you're good. And um, um, so they had to stay in a cave with the animals. And then, of course, it's time for the baby to come. And they couldn't wait to get back home. They had to have the baby right there because now they got to travel back home with the baby sometime. I mean, that's. It wasn't thought through very good, was it? And the government always gets their nose and hands and stuff that messes everything up. And whether you like government or not, it really doesn't matter. You've got to admit that a lot of the things they do just don't work out good for us. Um, and so now they're in the cave, and they got the baby, and the baby's born, and they, they, they take a beautiful bassinet, and they wrap the baby in this brand new handmade blanket, and, uh, and he's nice and warm, and they put him down in the bassinet, and the, the music's playing, and the, and the lights are glowing, and it's just a beautiful scene, right? No, this is my kind of vacation here, remember this. The only place to lay the baby is in a pig trough, I don't even know if it was halfway cleaned out. But what a place, what a place for a king to start out. What a place for the savior of the world to start out. I can just, I can almost imagine because of the stuff that we've been through. Now, I'm mean, not that drastic, but some of the stuff that we've been through on vacations, how exhausted Mary and Joseph are right now. For all that, all that they had to be fighting off the robbers and fighting off the wild boars and fighting off the lions and fighting the weather and, and they had to pack food and so the, all they're eating is oil and bread. Um, just not, not fun. And then we had this baby born. And then to top it all off, they've got strangers come to visit. Bad enough sometimes to 
to have family come and visit when you don't want them visiting, but to have a stranger come and show up and want to visit, that kind of tops off. It's like the, the icing on the cake, right? And so the shepherds show up, and shepherds aren't the neatest kept people either. Um, if a shepherd showed up to your door, you'd probably smell him before he knocked. Um, kind of like some of the farmers that <laughs> that are out there. But I, I've always said, and I believe this, that when you smell when you smell a farm, you're smelling money. <laughs> and I absolutely believe that. <laughs> That is the smell of money. So, this Christmas, it's a Christmas vacation. A, a little different look at, at the whole Christmas story because it's always been laid out beautiful to us, hasn't it? The whole, the whole Passion Week and, and, oh, Mary and Joseph, they made the trip down to Nazareth and, and we have the star that's shining up bright and, and we have all this beautiful stuff and every time we draw a picture or, or, or you see a picture of the nativity scene, it's, it's so gorgeous and it's all inspiring and, oh, it's just beautiful. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. It was ugly. It was nasty. It was difficult. And it was absolutely amazing. And we should get the joy for the whole rest of the year from this occasion. Because joy was born that night. Peace was born that night. And Jesus was born that night. All that, his, all that his parents went through to go through and you know why they went through all that? Because God ordained it. And you can look through the Old Testament and you can pull out all the prophecies in the Old Testament that they are fulfilling by making the journey and by going to Nazareth and by following what God tells them to do through the government and through the angels. It's just a, a beautiful time of year for emotions. Not so much for the trip that they took. So next time you don't, Jody, don't listen to this. Next time you go on, <laughs> on vacation and and your truck breaks down, the car breaks down, something happens, you run out of money. There's 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 no food. There's no place to stay. Think about that first Christmas and all that they went through. Smile about it. Have fun with it. Because there's, there's nothing that can replace the joy of Jesus. Absolutely nothing. This Christmas time should be amazing for you. Because as we go through hardships, God helps us all the more. He pours out more mercy and more grace on us each and every day. So whatever's going on in your life this year, whatever, whatever issues you have with family, with work, stress levels, put the prescriptions away and have a little bit more Jesus. And again, I'd like to invite you all to work to the, to the Christmas Eve service. Um, most of you should be there early to help set up and help get everything ready. <clears throat> because that's a lot of work for a pastor and a wife who only work one day a week. And that would be two days for this week. And I don't think it's right for the pastor for the preacher to work two days in Christmas week, is it? I know, I know, that just doesn't sound right to me. So, may God pour His mercy and His grace on you for the next week. And uh, I pray that you, you put all your worries behind you. Put all the Put all the, yeah, I know y'all are going through some stuff. Put it, put it aside. Think about, you know what, if Mary and Joseph can go through all this and still have joy, I can too. Okay. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you so much for the Christmas story. 
And we can, we can look at what actually really happened and all the, the dysfunctional stuff that came about through their, uh, through their journey. And Lord, and we look at the outcome that is just so amazing. We thank you for that outcome. We thank you for sending Jesus to us that we can uh, have salvation, that we can spend eternity with you. Help each and every one of us to accept that salvation, Lord, to accept um, your grace. And help us celebrate this Christmas with joy and peace in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.